Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for Off the Press, and let's uh, quickly go th uh, to the Punch newspapers and see what stories we can find over there. Uh, it should be in your screen in uh, just a few seconds. There you have it. It says, Arnez insists on slot. Uh, 17 governors demand 2023 South presidency. Governors fought removal of electronic uh, transmission of re election results from Electoral Act. PIB passage. Forum rejects 3% for host communities in strong terms. Also on the punch, oil hit $77 uh, a daily. Petrol subsidy rises to 6.07 billion naira. PFN and CAN tackle federal government as bandits abduct 140 students in fresh Kaduna raid. Opposition mounts as National Assembly transmits PIB to Buhari next week. Still on the punch this morning, Nigeria spends 60 billion naira annually to repair vandalized pipelines. And um, we can also see here, uh, my party members are Nigerians battling hunger, unemployment and poverty, says former President Ulushe Basanjo. Says it's done with partisan politics once again. Still on the punch this morning, FIRS secretly recruited 2,000 workers. Agency under financial pressure, says uh, the NCSU. And minister slumps at Bauchi event, lands in trauma center. Lagos Maritime Union members in three-day gun battle over money. Oh, wow. And police and hunters comb bushes as gunmen kidnap Oshun um, and uh, Edo travelers. And, of course, you can also see a picture from the Southern Governor's uh, meeting yesterday on the punch. Let's turn now to the Guardian newspaper. Pretty heavy stories here. The headline reads, Southern Governors want power shifts. Reject 30% share for frontier basins. The riders reads, order member states to promulgate anti-open grazing law by September 1st. Security agencies must inform governors before any operation in states. Ohaneze Indigo demands presidency for Southeast. Afeniferi Don Commission others hail resolutions. Also in the Guardian newspaper, stop pursuing Igboho, apologize to him, Shuinka tells federal government. Shuinka also says there will be uproar if the truth about Namdikanu's arrest comes out. Also in the Guardian newspaper, Honorable Tonye Adoki says why it will be difficult for any governor to beat Governor Wike's achievements in River State. Pandef seeks reversal of PIB, insists on 10% for host communities. Nigeria's constitution discourages economic diversification, says Mogalu. Also, Christian Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, call for Erufai's resignation over kidnap of 26 students. All right, and now on the Daily Sun newspapers. Southern governors draw battle lines with presidency. It also says here... Uh, Apply same speed used in arresting Kanu to end banditry and other crimes, showing cartels federal government, says expose on how IPOB leader was uh, arrested will cause uproar. Still on the Daily Sun, of course, uh, on the same southern governor's story, uh, the southern governors insist on open grazing ban sets, uh, set September deadline for promulgation uh, of, course, of the law in 17 states. Say the South must produce president in 2023 reject removal of electronic election result transmission. Obasanjo denies forming new political party. And um, Anambra PDP primaries, Okonkwo asks supporters to wait for next line of action. Again, bandits abduct 140 in Kaduna school. Clark, INC reject past PIB, describe it as satanic, unjust and provocative. Good morning once again, Mr. Chris Wandu. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Morning to you. Let's uh, start, of course, with the second Southern Governors meeting and the reactions to it. Some have described it as uh, uh, taking sides against Nigeria and an attack on, you know, President Muhammadu Buhari or, or of some sort. Uh, what's your reaction to their resolutions? Well, the, the, that reaction you mentioned is nonsensical um, in every sense of it, and doesn't make any sense. Anybody saying that doesn't know what he's saying, and he's just speaking from a myopic, um, self-centered uh, perspective. Uh, what we are seeing is a, a total political realignment uh, on the part of the Southern uh, leaders, Southern governors, as you may, as you may see. Um, this has not happened for a long time. 
Don't forget that over the years, what we've been seeing, how effective and how unanimous uh, united the northern governors are. Uh, you always know that we always have another governors forum uh, meeting every now and then, and they come out with all sorts of resolutions, uh, political statement, economy on economic issues, social uh, issues, and rest of them. And um, I don't talk about those periods, but especially from this, have come out to condemn uh, the activity of the northern governors. If um, the sun governors have finally woken up on their plum, uh, spot, so in trying to unite among themselves and saying that um, there is the need for them to pursue a common goal, irrespective of um, political leaning, that to me is a way of development very, very germane. Uh, so uh, I finally commend them. I think this is the second order. I think this is our third meeting and that they are having within the, within the uh, past few months. And if you look at the relations that came up at meeting, uh, you all realize that um, they are jammed out as well. Uh, some of these should be discussed on um, that. You can see that there's the, you know, the, a, in power shift. Uh, they're unanimous in, in respect of their political. Uh, parties and races saying that power must shift from the north to the south. And that is not saying whether it's PDP or APC, APGA, or any political party, power must shift to the to the south. What they are saying in essence is that if you decide to field a, a presidential candidate from the north in any of the political parties, you can rest assured that the governors from the south will not support you. That is what they are saying in essence. That is one. Then they also spoke about the issue of PIB and um, um, the three percent and five percent um, that is agreeable to host communities and the insisting that it must five percent. And that is why I will have a little challenge what the members of the South in the House of Rep Representatives, what was their thought and what was that really when they were passing the three percent uh, for host community, good enough the Senate passed five percent. I was thinking that there would be a harmonization uh, committee between the House and the Senate to be able to agree on um, that 5%. Then I uh, also spoke on the issue of um, grazing and said that effective from the 1st of September, there is no going back. They are looking the northern governors eyeball to eyeball that irrespective of whatever you say, we are going ahead to implement this. And that to me, is a very good. There are also other issues that we are. They came up with. Um, don't forget the issue of saying that before any kind of um, uh, security raid, uh, in road uh, in terms of uh, arrest and the rest of them will be making uh, made in their state. They, as the chief security officers of those states, should be put in the known rather than just the like that's the way and manners that um, security agents have been going about their business. So for me, it's a positive way to go. Okay. So when we look across these three papers, we share The Guardian, Daily Sun, and The Nigerian Punch, um, we see uh, the common thread about an interview that was granted um, to a news station by uh, Professor Wally Schenk and a Nobel laureate. And he bear his mind about um, the issue of the raid on Sunday Wu's house and um, other national issues, basically saying that, you know, the federal government needs to apologize to Sunday Wu. He, he went on to say it's not a criminal offense for anyone to want a separate state, for anyone to desire self-determination. He also said it's going to cause an uproar if the details of how the federal government and her security agencies arrested Namdi Kanu um, comes, comes to light. So, um, what do you think? Are you on the same wavelength with um, Wally Shrinka um, regarding um, apologizing to Sunday Boho and uh, you know giving people the freedom to agitate for a separate state? The noble uh, laureate is entitled to his opinion, and um, just like every Nigerian, um, is due to their opinion on issues on national um, that um, on national matter issues as it were. Um, but taking it before that, um, I totally agree with the fact that a protest or agitation is a legitimate way of um, putting across one's um, uh, views on issues. Don't forget that um, that it, is gone, it has gone to the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court has ruled that every Nigerian has the right to protest. It has, it, that has been decided. You don't need any police permits to protest in Nigeria. In fact, what the, uh, 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 that, the what that law says, if you are going to protest, the Nigerian police should pro give you protection, kind of make sure that 
it was the, that protest was not hijacked by hoodlums. It is only when you're not getting violence that you cannot say it, or then you can be arrested. Uh, so I personally, I have not seen the place, all the protests that have been held by old group. Um, so um, it is their right to protest. But don't also forget that we also have the mental issues in terms of security. Um, it is the fundamental right of the government to also make sure that every life is protected in Nigeria, uh, irrespective of whoever, wherever they are. Um, if you look at some of those catch, uh, catches of us, allegedly, because there have been some photo coming out on social media which were not, not verified. To say that some of those um, arms that we had discussed, which I leave uh, from, <laughs> from and then that we, yes, but the death cells have not come back to Kong. But if we, we go to catch how that kind of uh, arms from uh, Sunday, we well, don't forget that also that um, he also supposed to abide by the law. Did they acquire those arms legally? Because before you can have an arm in Nigeria, you need a permission from the Nigerian police. So if he didn't get those arms legally, then he has questions to answer. There are also some instances where uh, some people who have been invited to security agents, especially I think the police are there about, and invited about <laughs> once or twice, and he refused to um, um, attend to that um, uh, invitation. That to me is also part of lawlessness. But generally, um, I do I, I support the no right to a large okay. extent that so, Mr. every Wandu. Nigerian has the right to protest. Okay. Uh, agitation is also part of um, engagement. On the, on the Daily Sun, that same story, um, Shrinka told the federal government that they should apply the same speed that they used to arrest Enamdikano to end banditry and other crimes. And how do you tie that to this breaking news that bandits has again abducted 140 students in Kaduna State? Um, parents are angry. They're demanding a state of emergency. That's on the Daily Sun. So Shoyinka is saying that while these crimes fester, um, the federal government is instead focusing on, on you know, persons of interest. So how do you come in? Yes, we'll be saying that time and time again. Uh, don't forget the fact that over the years, over the months, been a high level of banditry, kidnapping, especially in the north. And um, in the, uh, the last country, we have over four, close to 500 children or uh, students that are um, in, in, in cap uh, captivity in the in bush now. And I've been saying that um, there's need for the, uh, the security agency to also apply that level of swiftness in asking some of the people that have been fingers uh, engaging uh, in banditry. But what are we having? Instead of um, doing that, they are engaging them. And some of the leaders from Benot are even saying that um, um, they, are not, um, <laughs> they are not criminals. They are just bandits that need to be uh, dis, um, dis, uh, discussed, um, going to discussion with and the rest of them. There has often a, a trendy video some, uh, some days back where one of the bandits was even boosting before. I think he was deputy governor, one of the top hierarchy of the, uh, from the no uh, government of Nigeria, that he killed several uh, soldiers. And he was laughing over it. I'm sure you must have seen that video. Yes. Uh, yes. So that in itself, um, it, it tried to give some kind of imbalance uh, where some people see themselves as sacred cows is when they are some, from some part of the country and the rest of them. Even a, a, high, a highly placed um, uh, person like the governor of Kaduna State, um, Arufa, you remember the a few days ago where he was comparing iPod and bandits and kidnappers and, um, uh, and Boko Haram. Some of these statements, are, they have been a gumi. gumi. Uh, we were told um, by the DSS that he was invited for questioning. And the man came out and said, no, I was not invited. And that was a statement from the DSS, from the spokesperson post, uh, of the DSS. And since then, the DSS did not come back to, to reaffirm the fact that he was invited. So if you look at all the body language and the rest of them, this goes to show that, but that's why some people feel that what we're having now is a systemic backing of the kind of um, security going on in the in the north, where that of the agitations in the south is, uh, is being crushed. Now look at it from what we have, although we don't know how authentic it is that some parts of Bono have been taken over by ISWAP, who is not going to ask people to pay taxes and the rest of them. That is a big challenge for us. So I think that we should be holistic and see, government should see itself as the government of Nigeria, not government of any particular part of the country, where the issue of insecurity, agitation, and all sorts of malice that um, is going on has to be handled in a more prosperous uh, manner to make sure that nobody feels like a second-class citizen in the country uh, we call Nigeria. All right, let's also go back to the um, uh, resolutions, but now from a reaction rather to the PIB um, the bill, 
uh, Edwin Clark, you know, has also made his own uh, statement saying that he they totally reject the three percent or five percent to uh, um, host communities and um, thirty percent to frontier states. He described it as uh, satanic and provocative. Um, wh what would you what would you say is your uh, are your thoughts concerning the thirty percent to frontier states? Um, they have been, been clearly stated which states are the frontier states. Um, but what do you think the government is trying to achieve here? The frontier states, basically, the frontier basin states are normal. They are mostly um, the states, there are certain states in the north. Um, if you go deeper, you see the state. Um, I think there are about seven or there are about. Um, that to me is good that, don't forget, the, as I said earlier, the southern governors have asked that and they reject that totally. Uh, so, uh, what uh, Chief Edwin Clark is not saying anything different from what the governors uh, of the southern uh, southern Nigeria have said. Um, so, um, to me, whether five percent, three percent, one percent, or ten percent, as it were, for host community is not much of a concern to me. Uh, because what are, uh, the problem is that the ones that we have already given uh, uh, that has been um, given, what were they for? You have, don't forget that um, uh, there has there have always been the derivation funds that are credible to um, this, um, some of these communities. Don't forget that the government also set up a ministry uh, for uh, for the Niger Delta. Don't also, also forget that we have a a, a, a prior that um, that was also set up for this uh, for the, the Niger Delta. And what have we seen? Corruption and corruption of the way. Don't you see one at the uh, NDDC, the probe and the level of embezzlement have been going on, and nothing practically on ground to to show uh, for the billions and billions of naira that has been voted to alleviate uh, the sufferings of people from this region. The cleaning up of um, Ogoni land and most of the uh, Niger Delta um, uh, communities um, are supposed to have um, reached a, a high level. Uh, by now, nothing seems to have been done. Don't forget also the, uh, um, uh, the agitation or uh, part the uh, yes agitation. Uh, 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 it was it uh, was it Avengers yes. um, in the community the issue a few days ago and the threat. So for me, I think that um, the people of Niger uh, Delta should raise up and make sure that whatever fund is released is used uh, optimally. And the people should also question and call their leaders and make them accountable for this fund. Um, so, except they do this, if you like, give them um, fifty percent or forty percent or whatever. If the money voted is not being used, is not getting to the communities and the people that are supposed to, then it will be as good as um, not being there. So, my own is that let us find a way of making sure that people are accountable. People of this region, the leaders I'm talking about now. The leaders of this region who collect this money on behalf of their people are not for what they are doing. All of them are stickingly rich. But if you go to the community, they have nothing to show for. How are we making sure that this money that has already been voted right. in the past will, or the water is going to is going to get to the people? And that is, I think, those are the questions we should be asking. Okay, all right. Uh, obviously, the people of the Niger Delta have um, a lot of work to do um, uh, to also redirect their questions, not just to the presidency, but also to. Uh, their leaders at the local and state level. Um, but I, I also want you to quickly speak on the um, um, elections and, of course, uh, the uh, removal of electronic transfer of uh, results to INEC from the electoral bill. Uh, some people have described this as uh, dubious and, you know, like they, they have a sinister plan. Uh, do you agree with that or do you agree with their reasons for taking that out? I totally agree with them. I totally agree with them. They are, they are screaming room for for rigging, and I don't know the reason for that. Um, and maybe there are some sinister plan for 2023. Um, good enough. The also the southern governors in their statements said that we should stick to the norm to the transmission, electronic transmission. What it means that once you vote, your vote goes directly into the pool. Uh, at INEC and hit INEC. Um, we've seen that in the past. Don't forget about the problem we always had in the past, uh, where we see ball, uh, ballot balls snapping at the election. You remember what, what, what used to be in the past? Yes. Where people just go use dogs and the rest of them snatch ballot buses, um, TR papers, and the rest of them. Those are all ways of getting We are in the 21st century. 
the 21st century where we are even thinking of electronic voting, where people should even sit in the comfort of their home. Um, <laughs> and that should just be a plus TV, just it really within break period um, during progress, you can just quickly log on, just cast a vote and still continue with her with her job. Um, that as it is done. In most countries of the world, nobody declares public holiday because we want to vote. People go to work. And during big time, they just walk in and just vote and go persisting. Those are the issues we'll be looking at. Rather than taking back to the KTK way of doing things. Oh, so I totally agree that this should be related. Electric voting and transition should be the way forward. I also include diaspora. The people in diaspora should have the opportunity of voting. We have many people. Remember in this sense, before the change, across the globe, I already don't vote. You know what I'm saying? So that is what you look and that is way forward. Um, so anybody trying to do anything otherwise have a sinister motive and that should be resisted. All right. Uh, I think we can wrap it up here. Thank you very much, Chris Wandu, for joining us this Tuesday morning. We wish you a very interesting day ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. You have a wonderful day.